Good morning, church. Uh, welcome to our Sunday celebration service. It's my pleasure to be sharing the Word of God with you this morning. It is always a privilege and an honor to share the Word of God. Why don't you just start by praying and commit this service to the Lord? Father God, we thank you for this opportunity that you've given us this morning to gather around your Word. I pray, Father God, that you will speak what is in your heart through my mouth this morning that your words will be a blessing to your people. I pray, Father God, that you will touch people's hearts, that you bring revelation, understanding, wisdom, and insight to your people this morning. We just thank you for your word, for your word is spirit and it is life. It is a lamp unto our feet and a light to our paths. We give you all the glory, all the praise in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. I want to share with you this morning from the book of 2 Chronicles. I'm talking about uh, the visit of um, the Queen of Sheba to King Solomon. We'll be reading from 2 Chronicles chapter 9, verses 1 to 9. And it reads, it says, When the Queen of Sheba heard of Solomon's fame, she came to Jerusalem to test him with hard questions arriving with a very great caravan with camels carrying spices, large quantities of gold and precious stones. She came to Solomon and talked with him about all she had on her mind. Solomon answered all her questions. Nothing was too hard for him to explain to her. When the Queen of Sheba saw the wisdom of Solomon, as well as the palace he had built, the food on his table, the sitting of his officials, the attending servants in their robes, the cup bearers in their robes, and the burnt offerings he made at the temple of the Lord, she was overwhelmed. She said to the king, The report I heard in my own country about your achievements and your wisdom is true, but I did not believe what they said until I came and saw with my own eyes. Indeed, not even half the greatness of your wisdom was told me. You have far exceeded the report I heard. How happy your men must be. How happy your officials who continually stand before you and hear your wisdom. Praise be to the Lord your God, who has delighted in you and placed you on his throne to rule for the Lord your God. Because of the love of your God for Israel and his desire to uphold them forever, he has made you king over them to maintain justice and righteousness. Then she gave the king 120 talents of gold, large quantities of spices and precious stones. There had never been such spices as those the Queen of Sheba gave to King Solomon. May the Lord bless the reading of his holy word. The first thing that I want to highlight on is the fact that she heard. We are told that the Queen of Sheba heard of the fame, wisdom, and the riches of King Solomon. We are not told how she heard of these things, but presumably she heard from traders or travelers passing through her kingdom. The important thing here is that when she heard about Solomon's kingdom, she decided to do something about, about what she had heard. Hearing is the first step towards entering into any spiritual blessing. In each and every season of our lives, we are always hearing something. We are always hearing about things that are happening around us. And it's not everything that we hear that is important or relevant to us, especially nowadays when there are so many things seeking our attention. We have to be selective and pay more attention to the things that will help us, things that will help to shape our destiny. Sadly, there are many who refuse to hear, to listen to a message that will affect their future. Many more will hear a message and choose to postpone taking the necessary action until it's too late. 
What are you hearing in this season of your life? Is it helpful for where you want to go with your life? Bearing in mind that if you want to be faithful, the Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. What we hear determines our next move. We have to challenge not only what we hear, but what we also spread to others. What messages are we sending to others? Are they messages that bring hope and encouragement? Are they messages um, that are necessary for them to get to the place of their destiny? Is it the good news of faith that we are sending to others on social media or news that instill fear in others? See, there are many things that are fighting for our attention, including the social media platforms. We're talking about the Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and many others. And so we are constantly having to sift what we hear. I want to encourage you this morning to always spread good news to others. There is enough bad stuff already going around. So news was spreading of the amazing things that, that were happening in Solomon's kingdom. And when she heard of it, she resolved to go and witness for herself. Bear in mind, this was a queen who had everything that she wanted in her own kingdom. She had her own servants. She had her own maids and attendants and a kingdom to rule. She could have sent some people to go and see if what was being said about Solomon was true or not. But she decided to go and see for herself. Something in her spirit told her that she needed to go and see for herself what was happening in Solomon's kingdom. See, there are some things in life that one just has to see for themselves. It's not enough to contend with hearing from others or relying on second-hand information. Solomon's kingdom was a type of the kingdom of God. And by type, we're simply referring to something that was concealed in the Old Testament which was later revealed in the New Testament. We know that the kingdom of God came with Jesus Christ, who revealed it to us. Unless we enter the kingdom of God ourselves, we will never experience the riches of the kingdom. So much for the saying that the proof of the pudding is in the eating. If the queen had not done something about what she had, three things would have happened. Number one, she would not have had the experience that she had in Solomon's kingdom. Secondly, her name would not have been written in the Holy Scriptures. And by the way, there are two chapters in the Bible that are exactly the same that talk about her visit to King Solomon's kingdom. Second Chronicles chapter 9, verses 1 to 10 that we've just read, as well as 1 Kings chapter 10, verses 1 to 13. And lastly, if she had not gone to visit King Solomon, she would have missed her place in history, and we would not be talking about her today. She did not just wake up one morning and pack their bags, set herself on a chariot and set off. She must have counted the costs and planned for this journey over a period of time, because she was convinced that this was a worthwhile journey. It was worth her energy, time, and effort. She counted the costs, weighed the benefits against the risks, and considered it to be a worthwhile journey. A journey in search of wisdom. A journey to go and witness the power and wisdom of God in the affairs of men. A journey which took her to see God Almighty at work amongst his people. I want to ask you a very simple question this morning. Where is your journey of life taking you? Are there some things that you are looking forward to seeing ahead of you? Are you excited about the journey that is ahead of you? Are you excited about the journey that you are on? What are you expecting to see ahead of you? These are questions that we need to be asking ourselves 
on a daily basis. Otherwise, life will just pass us by. See, when Zacchaeus heard of Jesus of Nazareth, he was excited and wanted to see him for himself. He ran to where a crowd was following Jesus, expecting to see Jesus. But unfortunately, because of his height, he was not able to see him because of the crowd. He climbed up the tree in order for him to get a glimpse of Jesus. And Jesus saw him and he addressed him. See, something always happens when we move, when we follow the inclinations of our hearts. Those deep impressions that God puts on our hearts will always lead us to our place of significance in life. Today, we are only talking of the Queen of Sheba because of her visit to Solomon. Not about how she ruled her own kingdom. We don't know much about her apart from her effort to have an encounter with King Solomon. The second aspect of the story that I want to talk about is that when the Queen of Sheba heard about Solomon, she traveled to Jerusalem. So my second point is that she traveled. Now many parables in the Bible illustrate that finding the truth is best upon searching. Seeking or searching is synonymous with taking the appropriate action in order to obtain something. The Queen of Sheba represents a seeker of truth and wisdom coming to the, to the king with an open and teachable heart. And like her, we are to come to Jesus with an open and teachable heart, bringing all that we have in our hearts before him. Wisdom does not come cheap. That's why the Bible encourages us to seek it like those looking for silver or gold. Proverbs chapter 7 verse 4 says, Get wisdom. Though it costs all that you have, get understanding. Having heard the reports of Solomon from a distance, she traveled a very long distance, a very long distance and a very dangerous journey through the desert before she and her company could reach Jerusalem. She had no invitation to come to Solomon and no assurance or guarantee that he would accept her. Perhaps we can ask ourselves this question. How far are we willing to travel in order to encounter the king of kings? God has already brought his word near to us. We have Bibles, churches, and online ministries that are readily available to us. How far is the mobile phone, tablet, or, 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 or laptop from which we can attend a service online? Are we willing to defy the weather and go to a prayer meeting on the other side of the town, expecting to have an encounter with the Lord? Because I want to tell you this morning that it is worth the effort to make the journey to meet the King of Kings. We have many clear invitations to come to Christ and many promises that he will receive us. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, for example. You see, Solomon was wise, but according to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30, Jesus has become our wisdom. He is wisdom personified. He is the embodiment of wisdom. Solomon could provide answers. We read in the second verse that he answered all your questions and nothing was too hard for him. However, Jesus is the answer, or as he puts it himself in John chapter 14, verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. She also carried with her spices, gold, and precious stones, because she understood the law of greatness, which teaches us not to appear before the king empty-handed. It is a wisdom key for gaining favor and access. Dr. Mike Medock, director and founder of the Wisdom Center in America, teaches about the law of recognition. He says that we should not fail to recognize God's gifts in people and the environment around us. 
Because when we identify these gifts or talents, we can learn from them and use the knowledge to our own advantage. That is why she gave the king spices that had never been seen before in Israel. Now imagine yourself a chef in Solomon's kingdom. Would you not be excited making recipes with the new spices brought by the queen of Sheba? The Bible says in verse 9 that no such spices had ever been seen in Israel. Why? Because the wisdom of God is able to attract new resources to God's people. The Bible says the blessing of the Lord maketh rich and he adds no sorrow with it. She heard of Solomon's kingdom and she traveled to see for herself. John chapter 5 verse 42 tells the story of Jesus' encounter with the Samaritan woman. Seeing that Jesus was no ordinary man, the Samaritan woman ran and told others about Jesus. And this is their testimony when they came and listened to Jesus. They say to the woman, we no longer believe just because of what you said. Now we have heard for ourselves and we know that this man really is the savior of the world. In other words, their knowledge of Christ was no longer based on what she had told them, but on what they had seen and heard for themselves. See, they could have chosen to ignore her. They could have chosen to stay where they were. But when they heard her story, they ran back with her to witness for themselves. Hence, they gave her this account. We no longer believe just because of what you said, but because we have seen him with our own eyes and we have heard him speak with our own ears. And so this leads me to the third and final point, which is that having made the journey to Jerusalem, the queen of Sheba now had an encounter with King Solomon. She encountered the king. What was her experience in Solomon's kingdom? In verses 5 and 6, she gave a brief summary of her experience in Jerusalem. This is what she said to the king. The report I heard in my own country about your own achievements and your wisdom is true. But I did not believe what they said until I came and saw with my own eyes. Indeed, not even half the greatness of your wisdom was told me. You have far exceeded the report I heard. In other words, she was overwhelmed by what she saw in Solomon's kingdom. And I just want to show you what the different translations of the Bible say about this experience. The ESV says, there was no breath in her. The Berean Study Bible says, there was no more breath in her. The New American Standard Version says she was breathless. While the New King James Version says there was no more spirit in her. Likewise, when we come to Christ and get to know him for who he really is, we are left astounded and we can only gaze upon his beauty and the splendor of his holiness. We are told that there was nothing that the queen asked Solomon that he was not able to give an entirely satisfactory answer. And this is absolutely true of Jesus Christ. He gives an authoritative answer to all our questions and solutions to all our problems. Solomon answered all her questions. Nothing was too hard for him to explain. Jesus says, bring all your worries to me. Cast all your burdens on me. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Jesus is saying this to us today. The queen said to Solomon, you have surpassed the greatness of what I have heard about you. In Matthew 8, 27, we are told that even the disciples of Jesus were amazed by him and asked, what manner of man is this that even the winds and the sea obey him. And here is the thing. If King Solomon, being a mere man, revealed himself 
and his splendor to the queen, how much more is Jesus, who is both God and man, willing to reveal himself to us, the ones he died for on the cross? He longs to reveal himself to us, but like the queen with Solomon, we must first sit at his feet and learn from him before we can see his splendor and majesty and marvel at him. You see, God gave Solomon wisdom because he asked, he asked for it, but even more importantly, because it was in line with his plan for the nation of Israel. Solomon's kingdom was in line with God's plan of revealing himself to the nations of the world. He gave Solomon the wisdom to, to rule Israel in such a way that the nations of the world would come to Israel and have a first-hand experience of the glory of God amongst his people. So when they came to Jerusalem, they would be blown away by what they saw and gave praise to his name. Second Chronicles chapter 9, verses 23 to 24, tells us that all the kings of the earth sought audience with Solomon to hear the wisdom God had put in his heart. Year after year, everyone who came brought a gift, articles of silver and gold and robes, weapons and spices and horses and mules. King Solomon brought prosperity to the nation of Israel, which means that his people also prospered under his reign. The builders, the carpenters, the architects, painters, craftsmen, and all other trades and professions also prospered. Psalm 72, which is the last psalm written by King David, prophesied about the visit of the queen and other kings coming to Israel. Verse 15 says, referring to King Solomon, it says, Long may he live. May gold from Sheba be given to him. May people ever pray for him and bless him all day long. Therefore, the queen of Sheba's visit was symbolic of other nations of the world coming to Israel to have an encounter with the only true God, the living God of heaven. Nations of the world were coming to witness for themselves the goodness of God to his people. And as they came, they were blown away and went back to their countries with the knowledge and understanding that there is a true God who loves to take care of his people, the almighty God of heaven. And at the end of her visit, the queen of Sheba went away with more than she had brought to Jerusalem. King Solomon gave her all she desired and asked for. Verse 12 says, King Solomon gave the queen of Sheba all she desired and asked for. He gave her more than she had brought to him. Then she left and returned to her own country. She went away fully satisfied. And in the same way, we cannot outgive God. When we go to the king of kings, we will always receive more than whatever we bring to the kingdom. We receive wisdom, revelation, knowledge, insight, spiritual gifts, protection, guidance, and all kinds of blessings that we can think of. Why? Because he is able to satisfy every need. He is able to quench every thirst and feed every soul. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly more than what we can think or ever imagine. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. Let me end my message by looking at this very important verse. The queen said in verse 8, Praise be to the Lord your God, who has delighted in you and placed you on his throne as king to rule for the Lord your God. Because of the love of your God for Israel and his desire to uphold them forever, he has made you king over them. Why? To maintain justice and righteousness. Oh, how we desperately need leaders who rule with righteousness and justice in this world. 
She praised the God of Solomon because of what she saw in Solomon's kingdom. She realized that Solomon was not the ultimate king. She figured out that what she encountered in Solomon's kingdom was more than the work of man. There was a powerful force behind what she saw and experienced. God Almighty was at work in Solomon's kingdom. I believe that the greatest gift, the greatest gift that she took back with her was the revelation and understanding that God Almighty was at work in Solomon's kingdom. And that is why our Lord Jesus Christ himself also mentioned something about the Queen of Sheba to the Pharisees. He said to them, the Queen of the South will rise up with this generation and condemn it because she traveled from the ends of the earth to see the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, someone greater than Solomon is here. In other words, in spite of all his wisdom and fame, King Solomon could never reach the same status as that of Christ the Messiah. Solomon was not part of the Godhead. He did not take part in the creation of the world. He never raised anyone from the dead. He himself died and never rose again. Faith in Solomon's name will not bring salvation to anyone. And yet the queen was prepared to travel a very long distance to have an encounter with him. How much more would they have benefited from having the Son of God in their midst? He who is the embodiment of God's wisdom. If the Pharisees were really interested in finding out if Jesus was the true Messiah, they could have been easily convinced that Jesus was the promised Messiah if they had taken the trouble to go a little bit further in examining the evidence that was before them. Number one, they had the law of Moses which pointed to Jesus as the Messiah. Number two, they had the word of the prophets. Number three, the testimony of John the Baptist. And lastly, the miracles that Jesus himself performed. But you see, they refused to thoroughly investigate these, his claims and therefore ended up rejecting him. But you see, the Queen of Sheba was also a sign to us. If she could take the risk of going on such a long journey, how much more should we take advantage of him who lives inside of us? One who is greater than Solomon, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. We have him clearly and fully revealed to us in the Holy Scriptures. Should we not be more amazed by him than how the Queen of Sheba was amazed by a mere mortal king? Our commission under the new covenant is to go out into the world and proclaim the good news to a dying world. We must always pray and ask God to help us reflect the kingdom of God in our lives, in our homes, in our jobs, or our businesses. My prayer is that people of other faiths and unbelievers will not only praise God because of us, but that they will also come to the saving knowledge of his grace. God bless you. I hope you were blessed by this message. And I just want to pray in closing. Father God, we thank you for your word this morning. We thank you for the example that was set by the Queen of Sheba in making the effort to go and encounter with, to have an encounter with King Solomon. Father, I pray that you give us the strength, the desire, and the determination to seek you, to seek you and your kingdom, just as the Queen of Sheba did, in, to go in search of uh, wisdom. I thank you, Father God, that you have given us the Holy Spirit to help us in our search of truth, in our search for wisdom, in our search for the wisdom that comes from you, our God. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And I pray that as we go on in the week, Father, you will guide us. You will be with us. 
you would teach us the things that you want us to learn in this season of our lives. I give you all the praise and I give you all the glory in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Thank you very much for joining us. Have a pleasant week. See you again next time. God bless you.